Hey everybody, what's going on? Audrey here, the Fit, Fearless, and Faithful Mom. Welcome back to my channel. I have on my lemon shirt today for a reason, because guess what? We are going to be talking about bad homeschool days. When some homeschool days, they just stink, like foul up the air, and they want to take away your joy and your sunshine for the entire week. So let's get talking about bad days and what to do about them. Okay, so I have been known in bad days to uh, yell. And usually it happens when I just let things fester and I just let things just not having great days. And then there was this one time when I started slapping my hand on the table so hard that like everything was like there was an earthquake and stuff like that. And so it got me thinking, why does that happen? When does it happen? And how to actually get over it. And so here we go. Ready? You know how like when there's a fire, they tell you to stop, drop and roll. Okay. So we're going to use that with our homeschooling. Um, stop and relax, drop what you're doing, and roll with the punches. Three things. Stop, drop, and roll. Stop and relax, drop what you're doing, roll with the punches, okay? Because no matter what, like even if you had just like regular old J-O-B, you would have issues and you need to learn how to work through them. Remember that you have multiple kids, that, multiple grades that you're trying to teach and it gets a little frustrating at times. So some days your kids have bad days, some days you have bad days. Just try not to ooze your grossness. Like we went through this transitionary little period. We had a lot going on personally and I was getting stressed like internally and so it was starting to like ooze out and then the kids were like, wait, what's going on? Ah, okay, so relax. Um, some days you just need a break and that's okay. That's okay. So let's get into it. I got five questions for you to kind of help you navigate through these bad days and help you push through so that when you get to these bad days that you don't just fold in and say, well, homeschooling isn't for me. No, don't, don't do that. So question number one, have you taken a break lately? And when I say, have you taken a break lately? I really mean it. Like, have you truly taken a break in your homeschool? So what I used to do is I would say that we were taking a break, but we wouldn't take a break from math, reading, history, and like some writing. Like I still was pretty much doing like a full schedule. If you're going to take a break, you have to take a break. Now there are smaller breaks that I do where I still might do like a math sheet, big deal, you know, just to keep them a little bit fresh so that when we go back, they're not like, uh, what, huh? you know, another thing that I want to make a mention about taking breaks also, you need to schedule that appropriately. What I have noticed is that we can go six, seven weeks, I'll say seven weeks, before it's like we really need a break. We go seven weeks hard and the kids know that at the end of that seven weeks, they are going to get a nice fruitful break where I am outside playing with them, where we are painting in the afternoon, where like right now Kai is doing a... um. It's a, what is it? Draw, draw so cute. Really awesome YouTube channel. Go ahead and check it out. And then there's the art hub. And so she's digging that right now. Like our whole table is full of art. Okay. So that's number one. Have you taken a break lately? If you haven't, maybe that's why your days are kind of getting all stinky. Number two, are you doing too much? Totally been guilty of this because you know that you can fit a lot as an adult in one day. And so then you think like, okay, I can make my kids do this too. And I'm going to force them to do all kinds of stuff. So are you doing too much? Take a look at your curriculum. Are you trying to like cram so much into their little mind that they just can't handle it? Are you adding too many worksheets? Are you adding extra stuff just because, because you want to get ahead? Think about them. 
Because if you are thinking about yourself and where you think they should be, which yes, is important. But if you're taking it to an extreme, like, well, we should have been like, I want to, I want to be way ahead. I want to be here. And my first year of homeschooling, I did that. I was like, you know what? I want my kids to be a grade or two ahead and I'm going to push them. I want them to work. <sighs> Chill out with that. Woo. Okay, number three, are you requiring too much of them and from them? When you look at the curriculum, when you look at the type of math that they're doing, can they actually do it? And like, things should be challenging. Things should be a struggle um, in a good way because when we struggle, we grow and we form like brain synapses and connections and stuff. But maybe you're just requiring too much from them. And again, they're just burnt out. Take a look at what you're actually having them do and then adjust it from there. All right, number four. Are you putting too much pressure on yourself? And then that oozes into your day. By putting too much pressure on yourself, that is not helpful. Don't look at anybody else. Look at what your state requires because all states are different. I know in Texas, like it's super lenient where I am. It really is not that big of a deal. Um, don't put so much pressure on yourself to do everything. Don't put so much pressure on yourself to get to this lofty, lofty goal. I'm a firm believer in setting goals, not only for yourself as the teacher and for your students as well, but if you are setting these crazy goals, like be realistic, you got to be realistic. All right. Number five, are you just too busy? Maybe you're just too busy. Take a look at the activities that you have scheduled for the afternoon. Take a look at the activities that you may have scheduled for during the day. What kind of co-op are you part of? Are you part of a co-op that is going to demand a lot of time from you? What does that look like? Remember that you are the CEO of your homeschool. And so when you look at all of these little components, how does that really fit into the general picture of what you are doing as the principal, the guidance counselor, the test coordinator, and so forth, okay? Um, so don't, don't just add things into the schedule because you think that it needs to be added in order to be busy. One of the best parts about homeschooling is that you get out of that rat race. You get off that hamster wheel of feeling like you continuously have to do things for the sake of doing them. That is no fun. Get that out of your mentality. Get it out of there. Okay, I have a sixth one for you. Uh, sometimes you just need to switch programs. Sometimes a curriculum just isn't working and you end up beating your head against the wall and then your child starts crying and then you start crying and then everybody starts crying and then you just might have to just pause the day. I wouldn't know anything about that though. And it, the curriculum might just not be the right fit. I had mentioned before in several of my other videos that like Singapore math is not a good fit for our oldest. It just wasn't. And it is a rigorous program. And so I love it. I love their structure. I love the intensive uh, books that they have. I love the challenging word problems book that they have, but it's not the right fit for her. She needs a program like Math UC where it is a mastery based program. Now for our other two children, they are flourishing with it and they absolutely love it. Now, with age comes wisdom. I'm still kind of new in this game. We're, we're in this little over four years now. But what I have learned is to pay attention to those little signals. Don't just continuously do a curriculum for the sake of doing it just to make it fit your box. Sometimes that square may not fit into that circle and that is okay and that is why we homeschool so stop it stop it okay and here's a little here's a little funny one for you i'm not really going to number this one but i thought of it and i put it in my notes actually don't make them color if they don't like it so why did i put that because because our youngest she's four and weird she really sometimes she likes coloring but she likes um, just like recreational coloring. 
it, when it comes to schoolwork, she does not like coloring. Like her math books actually have them you know, color little things. She said, mom, can I just circle it? Fine. Fine. That's okay. Now, sometimes what I, what I don't do is sometimes I say, no, 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 like we, we have to do it this way. Like this is the way that the directions truly say to do it because what I don't want is I love the differentiated learning. I love having them make things their own and that's okay, but there is a process to life. And sometimes you just have to do things that you just don't want to do. Okay. But with certain things, like she's doing at four years old addition and subtraction. She doesn't need to do that coloring. I'm not going to make her. She knows that two plus three is five. She knows that five plus three is eight because she's picked it up. You know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to make her do something just for the sake of doing it. If that makes sense. Leave me a comment below if it doesn't make sense and I'll, I'll circle back on that. So, all right. Remember, some days are going to stink. That doesn't mean that you give up on homeschooling. No, no, no. Don't listen to any like crazy voices in your head. Some days, yeah, they're tough. They're tough, but it's your job. So stick with it. I'll be praying for you. Come back next week for another homeschool video. If you want to catch up with me on faith, I post faith videos every single Wednesday at nine. So I will catch up with you next time, friends. Leave me a comment below. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up. Tap that subscribe button and I will catch up with you next time. Take care. Bye.